David C. Rockers, you must be mistaken. It's now, it's here. Come on down here and help us. David, David C. Paranormal existence. You mean to say you came here publicly? The first move and the great conspiracy had been made. Have you had a can? Would you have a can of lager tonight? Or? I'm on a diet, mate. Keep telling you. I, I, I've had no, I'm going to have a drink on the weekend, but I'm, I'm just dieting hard all week. What about um, like gin and vodka are very low calorifically, aren't they? Yeah, but I'm going to the cricket in Old Trafford. I don't really want to drink vodka from n- nine o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night. <laughs> Who's playing? Shape you be in? Who's blue? <laughs> just bring four bottles with you, all right, lads. What time's the cricket on? It's been on. It's been on for six hours, Mike. What? It was yesterday, Mike. Remember? Oh fuck! Why have you drank four bottles of vodka and you died? And you're in heaven. Oh god! So you you won't have a drink at all? I'll have a drink of the cricket. Yeah. Yeah. Would you? I will be drinking to, vodka. How will you get to? Especially won't be drinking vodka in a cricket ground, paying about twelve pound for a vodka. Sneak, you only take a hot water bottle, say you've got arthritis and you need the hot water bottle to keep your legs warm, and then just drink a lot of fucking vodka from a hot water bottle. It tastes like rubber. Yeah. <laughs> drink a lot of warm, rubbery vodka. That's nice. That is nice. Fucking dating tips by John Rutledge. That is nice. If you're going somewhere and it's a bit expensive, why not take a hot water bottle full of vodka? <laughs> it's not a bad shout, actually. That's a good idea. If anyone questions, you tell them you've got arthritis and it's your right to have warm knees. <laughs> That's what I How think. would they test it? They wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't be able to. So all, you have to all you'd have to do is put some sort of tube inside it, right? Just like a test tube, but jam it in after it's full. Fill that with water, hot water, preferably. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you get to security, you go, well, I'm just undo it, just pour it out. See, look at this, taste this. Hot water, dicker. Look at arthritis. You're done. You could, have you seen those uh, binoculars? There, drink a, and took a whole um, hot water bottle full of vodka. You... <laughs> <laughs> about two litres. Get fucking battered and get rubber poisoning at the same time. <laughs> you look like one of those Russian people who in, inject petrol. Yeah. Just turn up and then put a load of like gabba on. The kind of crocodile, is it? What's that stuff they were using before? Yes, remember? yes, that was the one. Oh, what, imagine oh, doing that. Man. Injecting Homemade, like, oh, Christ. What I want is a drug. If, that you're I drinking use... hot, hot, if you're drinking warm, hot water bottles full of vodka, you're only one step away, really, mate. Yeah. I mean, it, ideally, what you want with a drug is something that just turns your skin into scales and then it sort of causes your arms and legs to actually fall off. You know, so that's, yeah. that's that's the drug that you. But it could buzz though, apparently. Massive, Re- for a, for the first sort of week, and then I think you just your eyesight goes, and you just lie in a bed, sort of bleeding out of a load of sores. I, I yeah. think you know. But, but as I said, it could buzz at first though. Mm. Yeah, first hit is always the best. Uh, should should we um should we start this one? How do we how do we how do we begin it? Should we do an intro? We haven't done an intro for a while, have we? Oh yeah, let's do a proper intro. Okay. Let's talk about the name of the pod, what it's all about. A little bit about me and you, and then yeah, we'll get yeah, into yeah. it proper like pod stuff. Okay. Introduce the guests who we're going to bring up later on in the show. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> do we do hi, guys? Hi, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So keep it as, as modern as possible. Okay. Yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah. Make some noise, all that sort of shit. Yeah. You know? Have you got a... Um... Have you got like an Instagram name? You know, like mbubs372? I think something? I have got an Instagram name, but I think it's probably just Mike Bubbins. Okay. You need some like um, for the longest time. The only thing on my Instagram was a picture of my, my wardrobe because I was no, it was actually my sideboard. So I was trying out my my fo- camera on my phone, and you just you took a picture of that. Yes, yeah. side. I know we get other stuff on there as well now. Um, sideboard Pete, you could call yourself that. What's up, guys? Sideboard Pete back again with another video. Don't forget to smash and like that subscribe button. We're back and we're about to unbox some things. Come on, join us. Don't forget we'll be putting Mentos in lemonade or cola or fucking whatever it is later on. And also, I'll be filming stuff in slow motion. And on top of that, yeah. Mike's going <laughs> to oh, review magic. a film. Magic. Be, yeah, yeah. Now, before I review the film, though, I will be hitting a... Uh, like a balloon, essentially, full of water. No. Uh, with a tennis racket in slow motion. So be sh- be sure to smash like and subscribe. Hit that. Hit hit up that <laughs> button. Hit up that button. Do it now. It's amazing. And then and then we'll be going over to America 
where my little cunt of a nephew uh, will, will be unboxing stuff from various toy stores and talking about it. And then we then we get a lot of free shit. And then I'm going to homeschool my kids because I'm this they'll, they'll be so bullied because I've lived their whole life online to try and line my own pockets. They'll be so damaged. They'll be absolutely fucking brilliant. And then then we'll get we'll get a tutor in. Uh, oh, it'll be brilliant. And we, we'll, we'll we'll call it the, the Davises because that's my name. And it'll be brilliant. And Davis is at home. <laughs> and then we'll do like the kids will do quizzes and word searches now. And then on a rainy day, we'll, we'll play like hide and seek in my big fucking house. Paid for by a bunch of other cunts who who, uh, who uh, want us to flog their fucking tat on my twenty four hour a day uh, uh, YouTube channel, which is fucking knackering my own kids' lives up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna drive a car with my dick. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That'd be fucking brilliant. Yeah. You've got to tell tell them the name of the car first. Say it's like a Daihatsu fucking wank track. Yeah, I've and got a Daihatsu wank track. Your, yeah. Two, two That's wheel right. drive. Get about fucking nine GoPros in there and a fucking yeah. drone. Yeah, two wheel drive. Some other cunts to watch. I'm gonna drive it over my own dick, and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. You did that, mate. You have over 20 million subscribers. It's true. It's fucking. People true. will watch any old. I just want to say, by the way, that well, that the cunt in America I was talking about was my nephew. Yeah, is not my actual nephew. Who lives in America. He's a lovely kid. That right. that was the fictional character that I was talking about. Well, I'm going to call David Davis. Good not, name. Not politician. No, not but, politician. But, you know, it could be. It was his nephew. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, that's the intro done with. So we're sorted on that. That's Yeah. A... Yeah. Don't forget to drive a car over your own dick, but it'll be a car of a certain brand that I own because yeah. I'm a dick. Uh, yeah. And if you drive a car over your own dick, I'll give you $10,000. Yeah, and if you don't like it, you can fuck off because I've got loads of followers and you haven't, but I haven't got any friends and I don't have any friends and I'll never have any friends. I'm a cock. <laughs> I'll buy friends, you sad fuckers. Do you think I need friends? <laughs> I've got likers and subscribers. They smash I'll go my like button every day. Me, mate. You can keep your fucking friends. I'm going to drink paint and die, but I'll have yeah, loads and loads gonna... of subscribers. <laughs> And I'm going to box Muhammad Ali. I'm going to dig him up and then box him. Yeah. Just, and then we're going to have a draw. And I'm going to, then I'm going to ask for a rematch. And I'm going to stick a pen in my eye. Can pay a... Oh, God. I'm going to stop saying the C word. But, I mean, those people do want they me drive, They drive me. I'm going to, do you know what I'm going to do? Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get <laughs> ten light bulbs and I'm going to stamp on them. And then when they've turned into powdered glass, I'm going to get a compressed air gun. And I'm going to put it on my bum. And I'm going to spray the compressed air up my bum. And I'm going to bleed to death. And I'm going to get likers and subscribers. Yeah. <sighs> the shit they watch. Fuck it. Blows man. my mind. I ben can't believe Honestly. It. As, why? These families with kids who are, and they've all got their laptops in their house because they can't go to school. No, because if they went to school, they couldn't be on fucking television twenty four hours a day. No, fucking oh, sick. It makes me sick. I mean, you know. Anyway, it's each their own, isn't it? Mm. If that's what they want to do. That's what live and do. let live. That's what I say. My live and let live. If I'm nothing, if not. Yeah. They that's... used to say, "Live and let live." You know you did, you know you did, you know you did. Wonderful. But if this ever-changing world in which we live in makes you give in and cry, live and let die. That's me on the key. Wings or Paul McCartney? I can't remember. I think it, I think it was... Uh, I think it was Wings. Yeah. I think it was Wings. Quite a fan mm. of. Uh, are you, have you are you have you heard a song, uh, "Temporary Secretary" by? Uh, uh, I think it's Wings. no good. Insane, yeah. Uh, Maka clearly smoking a lot of weed, and uh, making this amazing racket with some sort of weird Smashing electronic the old instruments. Herb. Good lad. Yeah, mashing it into his brain. Lee Scratch Perry died, of course, this week. The uh, yeah, the, no, I, I thought of you actually when I saw that. Uh -huh. You're a big fan of uh, all things reggae. Big fan of all things reggae and Lee Scratch Perry's. You know what a what a great guy. Uh, smoked yeah. loads of weed, burnt down. Didn't his know him, but he seems like a nice enough fella. Cracking bloke, absolutely cracking bloke. I'd, I'd hang out with him if I had the chance. Well, as we, I mean, you could know. Um, not really my thing, reggae, as we've discussed before. You no, know, but, um, you're not. A, you're not a big fan, but um, I like the way that because I said I didn't like reggae. Mm. 
you you assumed I hadn't heard any reggae or what you, what you would call proper reggae. Yeah. Th- then you should play me, including Lee Scratch Perry. Yeah. Um, proper reggae in inverted commas all the time, trying to convert me. Yes. And I, it didn't work because I don't like reggae. <laughs> although, although, although once then, to prove that, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, as, as, as dickheads say. Yeah. You sent me a track, and I can't remember who it was. Yeah. But he was doing a song that got covered by the Communards or someone like that. Right. The I original can't... version was a reggae version. Was it Jimmy Summer or something? I can't remember. Oh, fuck, I can't remember. But now. it was an excellent song. I thought, fair play. John's actually found a reggae song I like. We'll have to dig that out now. We're going to have to dig that out. Yeah, yeah. find it. You're going to find it. Yeah, have a look. So old Lee Scratch Perry. Was he Scratch because he was a, like not like scratching records? He was before that's after his time, surely. Yeah, but before he popular for sort of the the, the echo chamber effect and the, and the dub remix and, and things like that. He was he was he, he smoked a lot of weed and he did a lot of product. He did a lot of stuff with Bob Marley and all the names you know, but a lot of stuff with the names that you'd be more into if you were, were a fan of, of the reggae genre. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, as we know, I'm not. I'm no, not. you're not. You know, so that's that's fine. Mm-hmm. But um, he he basically he, he'd had enough of sort of gangsters trying to extradite money out of him. So he he, he spent a considerable amount of time walking backwards, eating his own money, and then set fire to his own studio, which I think is a wonderful thing. Did he? Yeah. Are you making that up? No, no, that's completely true. Uh, fantastic man that he just he thought, ate his own money. Yeah, he ate his own money. Walked backwards for months on end, and then just set fire to his studio, uh, the Black Ark. Oh, that's a lot of weed, that is. Yeah, that is like a lot of weed. That's like a load of weed. And he kept chuffing it as well. He didn't. That's he didn't. not just a. That's not just a, like a twenty-five-year-old bloke riding a mini, riding not fucking BMX with a seat too low on it. No, that's is that's it? not someone who goes, lads. I don't think I'll have any tonight because last time we went to the pub, I couldn't go to the bar to order a drink. That's this is like this is like yeah, someone proper, who that had you know proper gunja weed. You know, he smashed it right into his face, mm. right up to the end. Mm. You know, so. Uh, Big up to anyone who, who can manage that. No woman will cry. And no woman, no ganja, no madness. You know, that's, that's yeah. what it's all about. You know, but, uh, Give us a try. Give me a, a Lee Scratch Perry song on my... Give me some names. God, I mean, there's all, there's all sorts of... Because he produced a lot of stuff as well. Um, right. But uh, you you know the prodigy. I'm going to put on the iron shirt and chase Satan yeah. out of it. Um, so that is. That's one of Lee Perry's tunes. He did that. That was Max Romeo yeah. did the tune. But uh, Max Romeo... As you may or may not know, was was kept off the number one, the number one spot uh, uh, during the was it the Queen's Bye. Silver Jubilee with a song called. Many uh, but he did a tune called "Wet Dreams," and the lyrics went to "Every night me go to bed, me have wet dreams. <laughs> Every night me go to bed, me have wet dreams." listen to this. And the next lyric, "Lie down, girly, let me push it up, push it up, lie down." And oh, when they said this song is pervy, he said, no, it's not. I've got a leaky roof and it's all about trying to trying to fix the roof, which I think is one, because it clearly is a song about being a... Yeah, yeah, but putting your body up a vagina in a yeah, you know, every night, me go to bed, me have wet dream. <laughs> That's a lot of wet dreams. You know, every night. Every night yeah, if it's every night, it's highly sexed, there's nothing else. You're sort of buying new mattresses left, left, right and centre. I mean, yeah. I mean, I lasted a wet dream by 1986, but I mean... Yeah, you know, that's it. Well, what you want to do if you want one... I'll be honest, if I was having a wet dream every night, I'd either have a wank before I went to bed or I'd go to my GP. <laughs> yeah. Well, what if you had a wet daytime? Well, that's just me. That's just me. Yeah, a wet awake where you're constantly leaking. You're just constantly leaking. <laughs> or a wet nap. Yeah. You just, you literally, <laughs> you, you're watching the cricket. You just nod off for half an hour and you woke up and you spoke oh, over the sofa. God, I've had a wet nap. Oh, God. I'm Thinking asked. about fucking Jeffrey Boycott. Just even if you slightly relax, just the juice starts to just yeah, come out of you. Juice. <laughs> juice. Just. Oh, Mike's had a wet nap again. Oh, yeah, there's just, I mean, I was on the train. I was coming back from a busy day in London sightseeing. I just relaxed for five oh. minutes. And when I woke up at Bristol I Parkway, watching I was watching the cricket. <laughs> stuck to the woke chair. Woke up on the sofa covered in Jacob's crackers and spoke. <laughs> oh, dear, the fun you can have. The fun you yeah. can have. Yeah. It's great but it's, that's what's great about this podcast. Not only do we look at the paranormal. I love the paranormal. You know, I mean, I love it as well. I mean, the fact that we put... We love covering it in depth. Yeah, I love it. And we really are covering a lot of paranormal stuff. Well, we, well Scratch Perry's dead, isn't he? Yeah, and that, again... You just say we haven't been channeling the spirit. Exactly. Talking about him now. You know, 
Uh, that's that's very true. Who do you know who's dead? Who else do you know that's dead? Oh, yes, remembering stuff. Here we go. This is a strong one, right? Okay, let's have a look. Who's dead? Um, uh, who's dead? Gordon uh, Kay off a of lower low. Yes, gone completely gone. But but did survive an initial stick in the head uh, yeah, during yeah. the big storms of eighty seven. Was it? Yeah, got a massive stick in his head, but survived that. I think he did. Yeah, um, yeah. died afterwards. So that's that's a good one. Who else is dead? It wasn't um, hair stick, was it? <laughs> um, who else has died? You can never think of them when you when you start to think about it. No, you? yeah, I mean, um, people have definitely died. Um, loads, tons, tons have gone over the years. John uh, Inman, of course. Oh, Michael Jackson, he's gone, completely gone. gone. On a Tuesday, actually, no, on a Tuesday, I was doing a gig that night. Really, but funny enough, I was I was DJing at Glastonbury uh, that night. There we go. And I'll never forget uh, two things. I had a piss behind the DJ booth and the other one was shouting yeah. down the microphone, he's dead, he's dead, Michael Jackson's dead. And oh. the, cra- the crowd didn't believe me. Uh, no, no. Well, I came out of a gig in Mad Dog Comedy in Swansea, very early day in my comedy career, Yeah, doing an Edinburgh preview. I made a big piece about uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker game, which I showed you, I think, before. Yeah, you, you owned that. A Sega? A Sega game? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. A bit of comedy about that. And I came out of the, and my mate Dave phoned me and said, uh, Michael Jackson's dead. I said, oh, don't wind me up, mate. I got, I'm in Edinburgh in two weeks. He's like, no, no, he is dead. It's on the news. And then, boom, fucking hell. Not without so much to buy or leave. Jackson's dead, and I've got to find 10 minutes of material quick. Fuck. That's it. Yeah. You know. Who else is Although dying? I never used it anyway. I thought, fuck him, he's dead. So, um, doesn't, doesn't matter, does yeah. it? So much. If anything, he was safer because he couldn't, he couldn't sue me for defamation. The um, Mel and Kim pop stars from the eighties. I think um, Mel. One of those is dead. I think Mel's dead. Um, yeah. I don't know. Tragic. What other ones? Yeah, quite sad that one. You know. Uh, Paul Newman's dead. Robert Redford isn't. Robert Redford's still going, but he 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 will go very very soon. I mean, he's got to be nearly a hundred <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. He's got to be. Look at Douglas. 100. Still dead? Still alive? He's, he's alive. He's alive, isn't he? But his old man was is dead. Kirk Douglas. But he, he lasted a very, very long time. He was a hundred, but he managed to look older than he was. Barbara Woodhouse, dead quite a long time. Dead. And again, yeah. for for some of the listeners under sort of forty five. Well, fifty off for that, I say. Yeah, yeah. They they won't 50. remember Barbara Woodhouse who was who was and, and then and then we move on. Of things when you could get you could get on national television for making a dog sit down. Absolutely. And getting an advertising deal with uh, Win A Lot Prime. She seemed to be on telly a lot just for going, sit. Yeah. Sit. And she yeah. wouldn't really pronounce the T. And she had these various hand signals. And sit was almost like a, a closing of the elbow. Yeah. With an upturned palm on the hand. Sit. And it worked. And, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. But you have, the thing is, everyone did it that way for a while. Then someone thought, you, you realise this is bollocks. You know, the... Dogs don't speak English, and they don't know what that hand signal means. So no they do idea. That in the wild, yeah. Just so they give a little tap on the bum, and they'll learn that that means sit down, sit, and then just next time they go sit, and they all will sit. And it and it works. You don't need Barbara Woodhouse. You don't. You don't, you don't need a, a te- television series with Barbara Woodhouse in a tweed skirt and a jumper with a with a white blouse and and a and Whittacombe haircut and glasses. Really big glasses as well. Saying walkies. No. Um, so, um, and then a leading on. But she is dead. Well, she's definitely dead. She's been dead for ages. Uh, Kenny Everett, of course, who used, used to sort of, uh, yeah. you know, he's dead. He used to do. So a minor, bloody, oh yeah, but he was burning the candle at both ends. Wasn't he? I tell, I, Kenny Everett, amazing. I'd rather, I'd rather go out like Kenny Everett went up than like Barbara Woodhouse went up. Oh, guaranteed. You know, if, if you could live the life of Kenny Everett, I, you know, I'd give both arms to live the life of Kenny Everett. You know? Although I'm not homosexual. No, but but Kenny was. But, I, I'd go for it. I'd go for it 100. percent I'd rip both my arms off. I go, come on. Show me what it's show me what it's all about, and I'd go for that. Well, get bum dragged by I'd, Freddie Mercury, would you? Why not? Because they, you'd have a couple of stories oh, to not? tell. You'd have a couple of stories Freddy, to tell. Isn't it? You know exactly. I mean, Freddie's That'd gone. Be a fucking nice. Oh, what a flipping! Imagine that for your claim to fame at a party. Oh, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Like yeah, in my mind used to be that I saw John Prescott once at, at, at Strencham Services. Yeah, but imagine saying you'd had you'd had Let's Freddie's like, cheese clamped between your teeth oh, in a massive, nightclub. Yeah, people would go mad for that. You could write a whole book <laughs> about that. 
You could write you know a whole book. You, you, oh, it makes God go, tell us in front of you, make a story again, Mike. Oh, go on. Oh, no. I, oh, it was just I was, it was like the 80s. And I was in this big party. And yeah, in Berlin. In loads of poppers all over the place and everything. Yeah. And just absolutely, like, absolutely bum within an inch of my life yeah. by Freddie Mercury. And he was brilliant. And then, and then Kenny Everett came in. Great. And then I got, my own uh, Kenny Everett came I in. I got off with Kenny Everett and then Barbara Woodhouse told me to sit and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 80s in a nutshell. That is it? the 80s basically. Isn't <laughs> it? That, that is it. The, you did say it was an 80s party. Yeah. That would be my defence in court. Yeah. If I was done for lewd behaviour, I'd say, oi, it was an 80s party. Yeah, exactly. It was an 80s party. It's what we were, we were all doing it at the time. It was the 80s. You know, that's that's what it was all about. Fucking yeah. amazing. Absolutely. Kids today don't know they're born, do they? No, they haven't got a clue. What do they do? What do they do? What do they do? No, fucking hell. Sat Nothing. there playing Fortnite. No, oh, fucking Plugged ridiculous. into the bloody, like like Neo, plugged into the... Uh, World Wide Web. The Matrix. And then and then they look they at this... They, um, weren't, they weren't getting a lead singer of Queen plugged into them, were they? No, fucking they weren't getting anything. But what is it? Love Island. What a what a bunch of... What is that? What is that? Oh. Fucking sickening. Attention sticking wankers. Bunch of cocks yeah. just sitting there on an I island. See. Get off with Daryl. Or get off with Janice. Oh, I think it. I love Island. I think I love Janice. I think I, I think I really I think I really like her, guys. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Well, there's real, real feelings for her, guys. Fuck. Yeah. When I was a kid, okay. it was Dad's Army on a Sunday night and some sandwiches, and that was it. You know, you stood then. Yeah, exactly. It was much you better then. then. Much better then. Waiting for your Spectrum forty eight K. Remember load. Dad's Army? Oh, how can you forget? How, I mean, all of them. All of them are dead, apart from that one from EastEnders. Yeah. You know. I'm trying to interview him for a radio show, but he was very elusive. I thought, mate, it's not like you got a lot about not about Lyle Son at all, isn't it? What What sort of things did he did he sort of say? Things oh, I, don't he... know. They, I didn't deal with him. He was like one of the researchers trying to get hold of him. Lavender. Yeah, he and Lavender. Ian Nothing Lavender. against the blog. I like him. No. But, um, In fact, the other part I do, the uh, the, uh, the social distance sports bar part. Yeah. Uh, I did a clip the other day where Ian Lavender was on a go kart with Windsor Davis and John Inman. Oh, now you're talking. Um, with uh, Ronnie Corbett as the uh, as the referee. Now that. How about a race? I, what was that? Was that a thing that had been on TV? I think it's called Seaside Special, nineteen seventy-five. Seaside Special, yes. Again, for the John Inman with his gold sparkly helmet on. Wonderful. Uh, Ian Lavender dressed as Pike. Wonderful. And Windsor Davis shouting "Shut up!" like he did in "It Ain't Half Upman." That's good. And again, "It Ain't Half Upman." Whispering Grass. Uh, Don Stell. Why Classic. do you whisper <laughs> green grass? Yeah. Did you say you saw Donna Stell selling tapes out of a suitcase? Now, D- Donna Stell, Cumbrand Shopping Centre, circa about 19... 19- well, I just say, John, sorry, the people will love the Donna Stell stuff. The, the youngsters will love all this. Yeah, the youngsters will. Go on. Absolutely apeshit, especially the ones who watch... Um, and all the paranormal crowd will love all this. Man. Yeah, this is, this is really... Tell us, the, tell us the story. Well, it's, my, it's my mate Jack Tracy, who... Him and his brother Dan. Uh, yeah. Dan lives in Africa now. Jack lives in... Uh, in, You'd have to call your son Dick if your name was Tracy, wouldn't it? Well, it's, it's been said many times. It's been said many times. But, uh, that must have been his nickname. They've refused to use the word Dick in the family. Uh, Dicks are never mentioned uh, in the family be- because of this this pun. But uh, Jack Tracy, circa 1991, 92, uh, went shopping up to Cumbran, which from Newport is a matter of 12 minutes in a car. Uh, fantastic uh, underground underground shopping facilities, covered shopping facilities, um, parking for over 2,000 cars, fantastic mm. wheelchair access. And uh, he went up there and Don Estelle had set up a trestle table and was selling tapes of his own music to members of the public. And Jack never bought one. And that was a really sad time because shortly afterwards, I think Don did did uh, pass away. Again. I'd love to have a Don. Imagine having a Donna Stell tape oh, signed by the man himself. Fucking amazing. Absolutely My amazing. mate, little Ray and Barry, mm. looks just like Donna Stell. <laughs> he does. Get it, he needs to have the ruddy And then one Christmas, we had a party and he just came in in, in the full pith helmet and shorts oh. doing green grass. It was fucking hilarious. Fucking, that's what you want to see. <laughs> Anyone who looks like Donna Stell should, should make something of that because I'm sure... Oh, should be compulsory. Yeah. I think if you if you, if do you look, look like someone if you look at, like anyone really you should be made to do that that you know all the time 
all the time. Yeah, yeah constantly. I think that's that's. I try to notice a lot of me, which surprises me. Yeah. My wife and I often have a have a, have a, a parlor game, uh, if you like, where we sort of well, not so much these days, but we used to go around town. Uh, if we were walking around town or driving around town, mm. and you'd have to call out Shipman if you saw someone who looked just like Harold Shipman. Good, very and there's good. Loads. Yeah, Lo- even after Harold Shipman, loads of blokes of a certain age have that. Wear look. those black glasses, that close cropped grey hair and yeah. beard. Yeah, and look just like Harold Shipman. My mate's dad looked exactly the same as Harold Shipman, but I've never been able to, to this day. I've never mentioned it. I mean, this is this is between no. you and me and, and the listeners, but he clearly looked like Shipman. You know, we well, give us his name and then Reese can put the hockey music over the top. I it was uh, well, it was uh, get ready to put the hockey music. It was Misty from the band, his dad. Oh, okay. uh, 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 what's his dad's name actually? I Jeff, Jeff Harold, Edge, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, the, the, all those names must be bleeped Doctor. out. They must be, yeah, Doctor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should say Do- so, yeah, Dr. Harold Shipman. Yeah, if you listen to this, uh, Reese, although you have left, he's left the podcast. Technically, he's gone. I mean, yeah. this is the second Producer one in now, and he, he, we're just recording this ourselves. Like, the fucking, the teacher's left the classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The teacher's left the classroom. Well, what he's saying, there was some sort of hurricane um, on the way to where he lives, Halifax, Nova Scotia. So maybe he's got to go and batten down the edges or something. Like that. Well, the last thing he said to me was, um, I'm in the office at the moment, but I've got one of those doorbell cameras that allows me to see movement from my house. So if anybody comes to the front door, I can see it on my phone, like a remote mm. camera. And he said, uh, I just saw the wife left the house to walk to the end of the road to pick up the kids. She hasn't come back home yet. And then he said, I've got to go. So fuck knows, you know, some sort of disaster happened. I, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, hopefully we'll, we'll find out uh, soon enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope but, nothing bad has happened. Cause you're going to feel absolutely awful. <laughs> The past sort of four minutes is just us talking about how we're going to record it. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine though. But people like to see. It's like the Wizard of Oz. They like to see behind the curtain. They like to see behind. That's true. What you know, goes into a smash hit podcast? Yeah, I mean, and again, you know, we're we're not we're not we haven't got guests. We haven't. Really... And just like a maths GCSE, we like to show our workings. Yeah, exactly. Show your inner workings. Talking of which, how yeah. are your inner workings now? Uh, you stopped sweating a bit, or are you you? I've cooled down now, yeah. I'm okay. all right now. That's good. Stuck Desperate to the trying to lose weight again. Put on 10K again, didn't I, like an idiot? Right, so if you put on 10K, how mm. how is that chunking you up to the sizes when you were just really out of shape? Or what, what was, is that... Oh, no, 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 no near that size. Oh, that's God. fine then. That's fine. If you chuck 10K on, it's fine. Just carry on doing what you're doing. Have a Twix, a couple of cans, have a couple of fried breakfasts. I lost 26K, didn't I? But I, I put 10K back on. Okay. I'm so you to get that 10K back on. So the 10K, right, if you lost 26K, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you put 10K back on, but any more, you, you yeah. turn into a bloater. But 10K is just enough where you can you can sort of keep going. 10K is like, you know, a lot of my trousers don't fit. Yeah. But, it, but it's not, I haven't gone past the point of no return again. So yeah. I'm just. That's cool. Just, just roll with do, that. Do a few hours on the exercise bike. Sweating. Take a take a week off the booze. Yeah, but of course you go into the yeah. cricket to to do. Some yeah, drinking. yeah. I mean, I will I will be uh, drinking a hot water bottle full of warm vodka on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be that's going. How, how will you get back from the the cricket? Uh, train, I suppose. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't thought that far ahead, really. Yeah, see what happens, isn't it? It's fucking miles away, yes. though, isn't it? Manchester. Fucking hell, that's... I, I really wouldn't bother with that. Just put it on the TV. No, no, we, we, you don't bother with lots of stuff. That's true. Um, anyway, yeah. I've got a very, very great bit of paranormal research that I thought we could we could drop in for, for oh, today. brilliant. How, how are you feeling? Because I know there's a lot of excitement about, you know... Oh. Summer series. Absolutely. I, I literally cannot wait. Uh, okay, well, let's let's build up to it. Mike, have you ever have you ever had a shit? <laughs> no. Okay. Have you ever uh, had a had a piss? So I've never had mate a shit like the ones you have. I've had some crazy ones in my my time. You know, ideally, what I like to do is I like to get up in the morning. I like to hit the coffee and I like to get it out as fast as as possible. I'm not one of these people who right. savors it and then around about two o'clock in the afternoon goes and sits on the toilet for 
20 minutes reading the paper. I like to get in there. I like to get the vape on, suck in some fumes from that. Look well, at you my... don't take a vape in a bong. Now, what I'll do, what I'll do, Mike, is you I'll... You dirty little rat. This is what you... It gets better. <laughs> it gets better. Get on, get on your phone. Get your news feed on. Find out what, what's going on in the world in the left hand. In the right hand, you've got your vape. Start sucking that vape in after drinking a very strong cup of coffee. And then get that, get that nicotine, get that going into you. And then just open mm. the open the gates of hell and let Open them. the bomb doors. Right. Yeah. Get it out. Fast and effective. So, I mean, SAS. Yeah. I like the fact that one of the listeners, uh, one of our many listeners, um, introduced his dad to the podcast. Yeah. I thought, thought his dad would appreciate it. Oh, God. How and did his go? dad, he lasted about, a, I think he said his dad lasted a little less than, a, less than two minutes. <laughs> and he said it was just two blokes talking about firing marshmallows at their arsehole. <laughs> He's right. He's absolutely right. I was going to get offended, but I thought, no, he's, his dad has absolutely nailed it bang on there. Yeah, he? he's just pointed out what it is, you know. Um, yeah. I, I can't. I mean, he's, he's seen beyond the subterfuge. I can't I can't deny that. It's just a yeah, fuck. No. It's just a horrible mess. Yeah. Talking of horrible messes, Mike, you've used the toilet yeah. in the past. Um, I have, You've yes. had some terrible times. Are you... I, are you, haven't, I haven't, no. Are you, are you akin... Are you familiar with, or are you a, a regular user of a, the toilet outside of your own home, Mike? Are you are you happy using public toilets? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm no. certainly not. But I found Mike the if most. If I do, I've got to, I've got to basically clean everything, cover it in paper. Yeah. But then, even then, you, your trousers got to, are on the floor. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, and it's horrific. horrific. It's horrific. Do you know what? I, do you know what I do? Do you end up sort of sitting down? Holding the crotch of your trousers in your in your hand, yes, so yes. they don't touch the floor. Yeah, yeah. It's just a you know, a, and if there's, there's places that don't even put like a coat hook on the back of the door, so you you're trying, you're trying to like you got nowhere to put if you got like a coat on or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Just horrible. Isn't it? I've been known if there is a coat hook on the back of the door to take my trousers fully off and the pants. And I'd them. rather do that. Yeah, I've done that, and I'll put I'll put two rows. your pants. Two rows of toilet paper on the seat, then I'll put a crisscross formation of paper on the water because the splashback. Oh, you don't want it splashing up? Yeah, good idea. I've that, never done that. Oh, if you get that splashback up, it's a game changer. That can poison you for life. It can, it can poison you. It can poison you for life. <laughs> You've got to get that that paper over yeah. the water. You've got to get your trousers and pants oh, off yeah. on the coat hook. Yeah. And then, and then, and only then will I will I do it. But it's very rare. But today, Mike, I found the most haunted toilets around the world. What do you okay. think of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most yeah. haunted toilets. Shall I? Shall I just delve in straight in? Well, if you can't delve into a toilet, what can you delve into? Exactly. Toilets like, are the like perfect. Trying like train spotting. Exactly that. It's covered in shit and taking heroin. Yeah. Toilets are the perfect setting for those jump out of your skin moments in horror films. The yeah. solitude and silence we often experience in bathrooms means that they're the perfect place to feel spooked. It's not surprising mm. that people sense paranormal activity in the loo of all places. We've looked at some of the most haunted toilets around the world and their stories, starting with Frodsham Street, public toilets in Chester, England. Mike, have you ever been to Chester? Um. The, I'm going to say yes. Did you have a piss or a shit? I gigged in Chester. Did you have a piss or a shit while you were there? I would have had a piss definitely if I was gigging, but I would not I would not have had a shit. Would you have come back the same night, so held the shit in or? Uh, yeah, from Chester. So it was a decent drive, but I probably would have. It would have been earlier on in my career where I couldn't really afford the hotel. So I would have gone there, gigged, and a really good piss afterwards. And a can of Red Bull. Yeah. And then driven home, and then, and then be a bit desperate for a shit then because I've drunk Red Bull and taken Pro Plus and stuff. Fuck. And that's where you know if you'd known about this toilet, yeah. you, you could have had a shit. There. Well, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, Ch Chester's rich history and ancient walls and buildings means it's bound to host some ghouls. There's a famous ghost that frequents. 
Ghoulies, exactly. Which, and when we say ghoulies, we mean penis and balls. Ghoulies, yeah. Yeah, that's what we mean. There's a famous yeah. ghost that frequents these male toilets who's said to have taken his life near the spot where they sit. The man, who's been nicknamed by locals as Tom, is said to wear... Mc... <laughs> the man, said to be known as Tom, is said to wear clothing from the 50s or 60s and suddenly appears in the corner of the room. He's described by local newspaper, the Chester Chronicle, as one of the city's most disturbing ghosts, as he holds a razor blade to his wrists, letting his wounds oh, bleed God. profusely. And he wasn't deterred when the city the refurbished... This. this is grim. He wasn't deterred when the city's refurbished the loose in 2011. The sightings got worse. So, if you need to shit in Chester, maybe find an alternative, fellas. What do you think of that as, as number one in the list? What a shit story. It gets better, Mike. It gets better. Good. Well, it literally could not get worse. Uh, Bodnagar... Even by your own low standards. It will... Well, there's another nine of these to go, so we're, we're digging deep here. Get that paper wrapped around your finger and get it right up you and scrape it all out because we are going deep. Deep, deep, deep. Bodnagar Government Primary School, Pabna, Bangladesh. Sad and spooky, this toilet could have been the cause of a child's death. In 2015... Oh, what are you doing now? <laughs> They're the most haunted toilets. They've all got a sad story behind them. They've well, all got a sad skip story. over that one and do the next one. Oh, okay. But I mean, that one was good. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, a load of kids went for shits and all died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. Slightly less depressing. Theatre Royal, Margate, England. No, we're talking. I'll ever keep been, there as well. Ever, so, in Theatre Royal? Oh, I don't know. I, I might have been a theatre, I think. Okay. I mean, did Margate. you have a piss or a shit? While you I were tell there? you what, I fucking love Margate. What a place. It's all we right, went there Margate. before lockdown. The sun before lockdown, we went to Joe Wiley the other night there. Right. In the, is it Dreamland? The sort of, there's the big fun fair there. Like a sort of peer, peer-based Victorian entertainment. It's not really a peer, though. It's, it's, on, the main, it's on the main strip. But, right. Um, Margate's brilliant. It gets a bad press. I live in Margate. I've been to Margate and I, I did quite oh. enjoy it. So in a nice little hotel, what a dreamland. The gig was, the DJ gig was, was really good. There's loads of cool little pubs and a wicked little gin and tonic place up on the front. Oh, lovely. And then the next morning... You had a shit. Even though there was breakfast <laughs> included in the hotel... Yeah. The girl there beyond reception was very nice. said, listen, why don't you... Uh, there's a brilliant place on the road. It's like a big red double, old double-decker bus. Yeah. Does the best breakfast in Margate. So you turn up there. It's parked right by the beach. You go... The downstairs is the kitchen, essentially. Lovely. Lovely. You walk upstairs, there's tables and proper brown sauce, and you have a lovely breakfast, proper English cooked breakfast, on the top deck of a double-decker bus overlooking the beach. Lovely. Get to Margate and have breakfast in the red bus. We're talking of brown sauce, Mike. There's a toilet in Margate that will scare the shit out of you. (laughs) 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 To be fair, if I was in the toilet, the shit's coming out of me anyway. That's all point of being there. That's true. That is true. But it's so scary, shit will come out your dick. Theatre Royal, Margate, England. This theatre is said to be one of the most haunted in southern England. There have been many sightings of different ghosts within the building, which burned down in 1829 and was rebuilt in 1879. Among Hmm. them are Sarah Thorne, the actor manager of the theatre, who was first spotted in 1918, and a man who jumped to his death from one of the boxes. However, mm. we're most interested in the little girl ghost who reportedly causes chaos in the toilets. Oh. She's been said have to you open... reading Harry Potter again, have you? No, check this out. She's been said to open and shut cubicle doors, unwind toilet rolls, and spread hand soap across the floor. Watch your step if you visit here, because you might shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, out of the first three, you know, that you wouldn't let me read the second one because it was too depressing. Mm. first one was a man killed himself second one is a kid rubbing soap on the floor where do you stand on that yeah not not scared yet no 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 okay no. well as you know no. our, our um, producer who hasn't bothered turning up this time he's not here he's from Canada he's not, he's not coming back no he's not coming back. I doubt it very much Halifax Canada uh, the, the very oh, that's where he's from. That's where he's well, from. Well, he's not from there. He's, he's from uh, from Gwent, but uh... but he lives now in in Halifax. Yeah. 
If he was to visit the Five Fisherman restaurant in Halifax, he'd shit himself, Mike. <laughs> this fancy eatery was once used as a funeral home and held as many as 2,000 bodies. The home was synonymous with a Titanic tragedy. Tragedy? Tragedy. Go and, on. And a 1917 <laughs> cargo ship tell explosion. You're not, tell you're not on the Bee Gees. <laughs> So it's no surprise that... Tragedy, film... tragedy, tragedy, <laughs> tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. Um, <laughs> I've been in this... I'm not singing it, Robin. <laughs> you know I can't sing it, Robin. You're making me look a right fucking dick. <laughs> just sing it, you fucking bollum. Just sing the fucking lyrics, all right. You just sing it, you bald fuck. <laughs> tra- tra- tragedy, <laughs> tragedy. <laughs> oh, God. It's the ladies' toilets that have the pleasure of hosting the ghosts here. Diners reported an angry male ghost and the ghost of a scared little girl. It's believed that she does not realise she's dead. Advice from the restaurant? Wait, where did you read this? The internet. This is the internet. (laughs) Oh, that's that. I know it, yeah. Uh, The next time you're at the Five Fishermen restaurant enjoying a wonderful meal or an evening of dining and you hear a crash. Chinese meal. A succulent Chinese meal. <laughs> Have no fear, because no one will blame you. Get me. your hands off my ghostly penis. <laughs> a Chinese meal. A succulent Chinese meal. I mean, he goes... Ah, uh, yes. I see you know your spectral judo well. <laughs> I've, I've lied about this. There's not ten, there's five, and I'm on the last one. Ghostly democracy manifest. <laughs> Go on in. York Arms Pub, York, England. Ever been to York, Mike? Uh, I haven't, actually. This is a place I'd like to go. I want to go to the Viking Museum. I've been quite a, f- quite a few times. And yeah. f- funnily yeah, enough, yeah. Well, I went there in... God, about six, seven years ago, we did a gig. And there's a man in York called American Dennis. And <laughs> <laughs> American Dennis, as you may be able to tell, is American. Yeah. Now, we yeah. first met... American Dennis at the Glastonbury Festival quite a few years ago. I was performing there. Yeah. And American Dennis was completely out of his mind, but he gave me a, a yeah. four leaf clover that he'd, um, he'd, he'd sort of, uh, what's the word where you, you put it in a sort of found, thing. not found, but well, he found it, but then he preserved, he preserved it in, in the type of plastic he gave out to me in sort of, sort of a solid plastic. A couple of years later, I saw him in New York and he gave us a weird blue powder that I refused to touch. Some of the other boys touched it and lost their minds. So if you do know American <laughs> Dennis, stay away from him. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just offended American Dennis? He likes I, this podcast. I love American Dennis. All he's I, ever done to you is give. He's asked, for, he's, asked for, he's asked for nothing back from you. And he's a, he's a brilliant he's man. He's given you a free four-leaf clover yeah. and he's given you f- free blue dodgy drugs. Yeah. He hasn't asked you for payment for either no, of those he things. Hasn't. He's a wonderful man. He is a wonderful man. And if, if yeah. American Dennis, you are listening, then I'd love to see you again. But I don't want yeah. to imbibe any of the any yeah. of the things. So have a nice day. <laughs> have, a, have a nice day. You may have heard of the famous grey lady that appears around York. That's because there are so many of them. The city has a reputation for being the most haunted in the UK and has plenty of spooky pubs and alleys to back up the claim. There are just as many ghost walks which will tell you the stories of these spectres. This particular ghost yeah, is said to be a, a nun. <laughs> this particular ghost is said to be a nun. For a tenner each every half an hour. Yeah, right up. Uh, a nun who appears in the gents' Someone bathroom. Someone died. <laughs> who died? In this very room. Oh, God, do they? Yeah. And they'll have, like, they'll have, like, for some reason, they'll be in a room that they'll have bought from a second-hand shop an old rocking horse. Yeah. There's some shit old dolls. Yeah, put them in the corner of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a musty old bed. <laughs> if you come in here on the right evening, the rocking horse will move. And if you lie yeah. with your legs open, some things will go up yours, but not through your <laughs> anus, through your cock all, mate. Why? Why is this out-of-work Geordie actor <laughs> working, in, working in York? Don't ask how I got here. But I tell you, two divorces can put you in shit street. And that's how I've ended up telling the story of the rotting horse and the ghost that'll go up your dick eye. 
if you choose to sleep in here for the night and then pay good money to stay with your legs open and with your fucking pants off waiting for the rocking horse to move and the ghost to go up you, but not up your bottom, up your fucking dick eye, mate. That's the price of two divorces, that is. And that's how I've ended up here doing this every night for fucking six years, waiting for somebody to come along and fucking save us or at least give us a fucking a fucking voiceover on an advert or fucking or something on a fucking pantomime or anything. I'll fucking do anything. I'll do guided tours around fucking Liverpool, anything to get me out of it, but, I, but nothing's come up. My agent hasn't rung for fucking three months. Fucking, I've, I've, I've just fucking believe me. The fucking rocking horse will do what it does, and the ghost will go up your cock. Eye, that's fourteen quid. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, spooky, isn't it? Fucking spooky. You try, you try keeping that spooky every fucking night, every fucking night. In this fucking haunted fucking toilet, hotel, whatever it is, I don't care. 14 quid, please, mate. Stop it up. Stop it up. Just give me 14 quid. Who's next? <laughs> I'm not changing the story. That's what it is. Oh. 14 quid. 14, not even enough to fucking get my own room. My own fuck. I sleep in here. You know that. I sleep in here with that fucking rocking horse and those fucking dolls. That's what I do. <laughs> Two divorces. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I, we should stop. We should just oh, stop. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. It's so hot in here, I can't... I can't, I can't do it <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm sweating like a fucking man. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, we, we, I, we just have to end it here. We've done, we've done, yeah, yeah. you know. We've done, no, that's fine. Yeah, there's loads of it it's, it's free, isn't it? It's free, exactly. They're not <sighs> paying for this. I've got COVID right. for fuck's sake. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> oh, God. <sighs> what are you up to for the rest of the night now? Nothing, no. No, me neither. I'm just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, just God. tell them to uh, just smash smash the smash the like button. Oh, yeah, smash it. If you smash it. Um, it. Follow, subscribe. If you've got to make sure of the paranormal. Yeah, get them. Get them explained. Um, Any, anything like that. Do yeah. That. And we'll... Uh, get them to get, listen to... Yeah. Listen to this. They can, they can listen <laughs> Because no, no other fucker is. No. No other. Fucking no. terrible. Terrible. Oh, fuck that fucking music. <coughs> oh, God. Oh. Indigestion's playing up. Yeah. Well, I, sp- I suppose that's that's it, isn't it? We just... Um, sp- yeah, that's it. That's, 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 it, that's yeah. the... That's the Tom one. Tom Bobber, I suppose, as they say. Yeah, that's the, that's the one. That's the... Okay. Well, I... I more I, than I, enough. Who, how, do, more do than we, enough. Do we end? Do we just end? I don't really know. I don't ever know. Um, so. Okay. I'll, if I stop it, I think it, it will just... So should, should we say goodbye to each other now as, as well? Like, because I... Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if, okay. yeah, yeah. You've got to do it. Okay. Yeah. Whatever, whatever's easy for you. Yeah. Why don't stop. we stop this and then you can give me a ring and, and I'll talk to you about tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I'll press stop, and if it does stop, I'll ring you. But if if it doesn't stop, but it stops the recording, I'll carry on talking to you. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'll press stop. So, for the sake of the the podcast, this is. Yeah, we're gonna get a car and drive anywhere. Oh yeah, we normally yeah yeah. normally do. Okay, yeah. So the car today will be. Uh um, Do you want to pick? Do you want to pick a car? Oh, I love a Mazda Bongo then. Classic. So there's room for there's room for us in there and room for a kitchen and a bed. Um, I'll I'll get in the driving seat. You pick the song. Let's go. A uh, bit of John Denver. I lovely. imagine we're going like camping and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Um, oh, I can't think of any John Denver song. What about what about um 
Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, well, every day is an endless stream of cigarettes and magazines. Ooh, that, what's that one? All comes falling back to me in shades of mediocrity. Yeah. And every smiling face I see reminds me that I'd like to be Homewood Bound. I wish I was Homewood Bound. Home, where my balls are aching. Home, <laughs> when my cock is faking. Home, when my aim is shaking silently for me. Silently for me. To get to the railway station, I'm a big fan of masturbation. <coughs> I got my cock and balls in hand. It's not the way I had it planned. I'm lowering my anus on a three foot seven umbrella stand. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck it is. Well, it's just, I'm going to take, we better go. We better go. Yeah, fuck a minute. Yeah, fuck him. Goodbye. Come on. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Demon Seed. Walker, you must be mistaken. It's now, it's here. The man down here, help us. Demon Seed. Paranormal existence. You mean to say you came here purposely? The first move in the great conspiracy had been made. 